Okay, here we are back. At, it's our fake rain, our fake rainstorm there on the exterior. And uh, that will continue through the rest of the episode. And so I'll talk more about what we had to do in order to make that happen. But uh, the okay at this point in the story again they're they're hoping to contact um, brother Joe or Uncle Joe and very frustrated because they can't leave this spot and leave these weird people and they're afraid uh, that Joe is just not going to be there when they when they're able to get back on the road looking for him uh, at this point they have received word that he's uh, He's somewhere, you know, a couple hours away by driving, and they're just hoping that they can get a chance to, 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 to go meet him. They've uh, learned a little bit about the strange people who populate this, um, this alien cafe. Every year they commemorate the day that astronaut Scott Porter disappeared, and, um, and that's when the, the character played by James Brolin shows up, just to just to see these people, and find out a little bit more about them, uh, without actually revealing that he's in fact the same Scott Porter that they all seem to be waiting for, to, waiting for him to return, and uh, and he, uh, uh, you know, he's just kind of incognito. Didn't didn't like the spotlight. The way it plays out in the story is that while he was on the moon. He had um, sort of a spiritual experience and came back home from the moon wanting to tell everyone about it, and uh, nobody wanted to hear about it. And all the uh, the psychologists and uh, folks at NASA just wanted him to be quiet about his strange spiritual experience, and uh, and so that's part of the reason he decided he wanted to just kind of fade away and not be in the spotlight anymore. Also, um, Russell Green has reminisced about um, a time when he was trying to save... Well, he, he was out with his brother Joe as kids, and they were near a river, and Joe fell in the river, and, uh, and Russell just kind of froze and didn't help him out, didn't uh, jump into the river to save his brother, and so he's kind of reminiscing and, about that and feeling bad about it. At the same time, they've just revealed within this storyline that um, the, 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 the heavy rains have turned the little gully out behind Emily's alien cafe into a raging river. And now the character Coffee suggests that maybe Russell wants to go out there and jump the river as he's trying to uh, somehow uh, reminisce about the time he didn't jump in the river before. So here's all our fake rain. And that's actually a photo double. Uh, where you see the legs from the waist down. I don't know why they just ran out of time that night. And, and, and that's an insert shot from a different day. But it's also supposed to play like it's Russell's memory. So uh, he's, he's, he's reminiscing about the time when Joe fell in the river. Uh, the actual moments we portray here of the kids falling in the river, that was shot by a second unit on a different day in a completely different place. And the main unit of our Promised Land production crew wasn't there at all. So they, they went out and shot this stuff somewhere, and uh, it was edited into the episode. Now, we're out here in the middle of the desert at night, and because it was the end of July, sundown... Oh, and that, what, that, that's me, uh, not in the dress, but the other one. <laughs> that was actually my legs uh, doing the photo double for James Brolin. So I got to put on the wardrobe and go out and get wet. And I think they paid me an extra, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks for, for having to get wet that night. <laughs> so for some reason, I don't know why they didn't do that shot with the, with the actual, you know, cast members. They, they got the photo doubles to do the legs down shots in the rain. Uh, okay. So, so for all this, they've got, uh, they've got rain towers or, you know, just some pipes up in the air and they're, and they're dripping this, uh, water down, but it's not a real rainstorm. And it's, you know, it's late at night because because it's summer. The sundown wasn't until late, so they couldn't shoot this until, you know, close to midnight by the time we got into all this stuff. So we were working very late into the night, into the real night, with our fake rain. And every time they would stop shooting, they would shut off the, uh, the rain-making equipment. And they had all these uh, bright movie lights still on. And this attracted bugs from <laughs> miles and miles around. It seemed like uh, the, the, they were just flocking around the movie lights, just, just swarms and swarms of, of bugs. 
out there. And, uh, and uh, of course, the, the fact that we had just poured water out probably helped. That. Oh, oh, okay. So you just saw a shot of uh, lightning striking the radio tower outside of the uh, alien cafe. And that shot, to, because that was a special effects shot, they actually brought in a 35 millimeter camera uh, to, to do that shot. Most of what we did was on 16 millimeter film, but knowing that that was going to be an effect shot to add that lightning bolt, they brought in a 35 millimeter camera to get that shot. And, uh, and then we went back to 16 millimeter for, for the rest of it. So, okay, so now here we are back at the interior uh, set doing our exciting uh, final scene of the episode. And it's a long scene because they have to explain a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff. They finally have to admit to all the strange people that have gathered at the Alien Cafe what the truth is about James Brolin's character and, and everything else. So one thing they had to do here, because this is a few days in real life after we shot the, the, the fake rain stuff outside, uh, they had to take these actors, uh, Gerald McCraney and Wendy Phillips and uh, James Brolin, and get them wet. And so they had to kind of stand there in wet clothes for, I don't know, an hour or two while we were shooting this scene days later. Um, one thing that was nice about this episode is we had we had some of our people who normally work as extras on the show uh, that got to work for you know several days in a row as sort of featured extras as the people in the Alien Cafe, and so that was nice for them. They got paid a little bit extra to be featured as extras, and uh, they got to be there all day and. And I'm sure that was fun for them to be recognize, recognizable when they got to see the final episode. But on the other hand, um, you know, it seems strange to me that we say, hey, congratulations, we're going to make you a featured extra in uh, this episode of Promised Land. The good news is you're going to be featured in the episode. Um, and the bad news is the reason we've chosen you is we think you look weird. <laughs> And we want weird-looking people in this episode. I don't think that's what they said to the extras, but looking at it now, it is kind of, yeah, okay, we got you in here because we think you look weird. Uh, you know, and so there's a woman there who just wears these big pink curlers the whole time. I guess, you know, she doesn't look that weird, you know, without the curlers, but, uh, you know, it's still kind of, you know, what do you do? Hey, congratulations, you've been cast in, in, in this movie. And the bad news is the reason you've been cast is... You are a very fat, funny-looking person. You know, something like, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. People are movie stars. And uh, I, anyway, uh, moving on, okay. <laughs> this particular place where we're shooting all this, again, this was a real bar near Copperton, Utah, near the Bingham Canyon Mine. And um, just... A few years ago, I'm recording this in January of 2015. I uh, did a little bit of research and found out about you know five six years ago this place was burned by burned down by an arsonist, and then they rebuilt because some of it survived. So they rebuilt, and but for some reason um, it didn't make it. And the this place is completely gone. There's not even a, a trace of it. You could drive past it today, or or as I did, look at it on the Google Street View, and it's it's. It's gone. There's a, there's just a little bit of a hint of maybe where there used to be a foundation, but if you didn't know any better, you would say you would think there was never anything there, where where this uh, where this was. Uh, also, there's a high school. Uh, there was a high school nearby, and we used it uh, more than once on Promised Land and even on Touched by an Angel uh, around this time. And that particular high school uh, in Copperton is just gone. Then bulldozed, gone. So, um, you know, Copperton is a, an interesting little town, and I don't know the full history of, of Copperton, uh, but uh, it's kind of sad to see places go, especially when it was a place that was well-liked by movie crews wanting to, uh, wanting to use those locations. All right, so in this episode, one of the uh, plot lines, plot points is, you know, they're, they're, they're talking all about Joe. And at this point, we didn't have an actor to play the part of Joe. We didn't know, uh, as far as the crew was concerned, 
when we were going to finally meet up with Joe and have someone play that part and have that character be on an episode or more. And uh, eventually, it turned out, the following year, we did establish uh, the character Joe, played by Richard Thomas. Richard Thomas, well-known as John Boy Walton on The Waltons, and a lot of other TV uh, movie credits. Um but at this time, I, I, I heard some people talking and throwing around the name Gregory Harrison, that they thought maybe eventually we'd get Gregory Harrison to play the part of, of Joe Green. But we did, we, that didn't happen eventually or ever. And so um, right now, what they're doing in the episode is they've said, well, for some strange reason after the lightning strike, the radio station has survived. And the range of this AM radio station, go, it goes pretty far at night. So here it is night. Hey, it's a long shot, but let's get on the radio and let's try and talk and see if Joe is out there listening somewhere. And, uh, you know, Claire Green says, hey, you know, if it's meant to be, he will he will hear you. So let's let's get on there and uh, and talk to Joe on the radio. And so what we are portraying here is supposedly that's Joe. That's Joe's legs and feet. And he's kind of shuffling around at a bus station ready to catch a bus out of town. And he's hearing this radio broadcast. Um, but, of course, since we didn't have the actor Richard Thomas, um, this, what you're seeing here, it is supposed to be Joe Green, but it's just a crew member or an extra or somebody that they dressed up and, you know, they show his feet, they show his hands, they just make a few little uh, references there, and you're supposed to think that that's Joe, but, uh, you know, it has nothing to do with... Uh, with uh, Richard Thomas. Okay, um, another thing I, I just wanted to point out, you know, we, ha- we got Leon Redbone on this episode, and he's a musician, and he was b- best known as a musician uh, before this, and, and even today. Uh, so we get him on the show, and he doesn't uh, sing or play a single note. <laughs> Which is disappointing, but you know, the, the same thing happened just two episodes later, but actually an episode that aired before this, where we had Joe Walsh, the, the great Joe Walsh rock star, was on the show. Didn't sing or play a single note. Anyway, we'll get into that later on a different audio commentary for a different episode when you will eventually see Joe Walsh on Promised Land. Uh, hey, one more story, though. I think this warrants uh, telling you. So I mentioned that it was kind of a tough schedule when we shot the show, a lot of overtime. I think there was some frustration, maybe even some hurt feelings. So something nice that our assistant director did was he commissioned a bunch of hats to be made with the logo from the Alien Cafe that they had created for the episode. So uh, if you look in the episode, you'll even see a neon sign with the same logo on it. This was a souvenir that we each got as a thank you from our assistant director. And it's a souvenir I still have from working on this episode of Promised Land. 